In the workshop, fitting a mechanical lubricator to a Stuart 5A steam engine. This is part two. In the previous episode, I showed the silver soldering of this piece of brass onto the lower eccentric strap. The part was put into the acid bath for a few hours to remove the flux residue. After rinsing the part in some water to remove all the acid, I'm now cleaning it up on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper, followed by cleaning it with some Scotch-Brite. I don't want it to be polished, I need it to match the other side of the eccentric strap. Now I have to drill and tap a hole to take a pin which will drive the lubricator. First of all I use a centre drill followed by a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill which is tapping size for 4BA. And once I've drilled the 1 8 of an inch diameter hole all the way through the part, it's time to thread the hole using a 4BA tap, making sure that the 4BA tap enters the hole perfectly square. And how do I know it's perfectly square? I'm not using a tap guide. No, I'm using my usual calibrated eye for this. For this job, I'm using a taper tap. And the tapered part of the tap goes into the hole part way to start with, which makes alignment easier. Once the hole is threaded, I'm deburring it using a twist drill. The hole in this extension to the eccentric strap will take a pin that I will make later. I'm just testing it with a bolt. Now it's time to refit the lower part of the eccentric strap, and of course I'm oiling it first, because after the silver soldering it wasn't very well lubricated. Over now to making the link, there are many different ways to do this. I've chosen, as usual, the simplest and the quickest method. I could use a slitting saw in the milling machine, which would be more accurate I suppose, but I don't think a lot of beginners to the hobby will have a slitting saw. I've used my bandsaw, but you could use an ordinary hacksaw with two blades fitted, just so you got the correct width. Time now to clean up the slot in the piece of bar, and I'm using some wet dry sandpaper for this. Here I'm measuring the distance between the eccentric strap extension, so I can make a proper arm to operate the lubricator. I just need to make sure that the distance is correct, and also make sure that for every revolution of the crankshaft, the ratchet goes over one of the teeth. And as you can see in this clip, that is the case. To make the test lever, I use a piece of silver solder. And at the moment, the silver solder is sat on top of the piece of bar, and this will give me the distance between the two holes I need to drill in the piece of bar. I'll drill the first one all the way through, and I'm threading it 8BA, using an 8BA tap. You have to be very careful with these small taps because they break really easily. But I didn't break it thankfully. And after the successful tapping operation, I'm removing the burrs in the slot using a small needle file that just fits. And now I'm using some marking out blue kindly sent to me by a man called Norman. And in this clip I'm waiting for it to dry. And once it had dried, I scribed some marking outlines on it. And now it's over to the milling machine. Some engineers will cringe looking at this because it looks slightly illogical. Really it would be better to clamp it all down, but that takes too long. By the time I've messed about with clamps and got it exactly perfect, I can have the job finished. Okay, I might make a mess of it, but then I'll make another one, which is good practice. This footage, by the way, really is speeded up about 800% and I'm using a large three quarters of an inch diameter milling cutter, not a slot drill, this has four cutting flutes. I'm not using any lubricant or coolant so you can clearly see what's happening. Obviously, as the metal gets thinner, the end of this gets to be a bit springy, so you have to slow down the cut, but eventually it ends up looking okay. And after the usual cleanup operation, working down the grades of sandpaper, it's time to fit it to the lubricator arm which, by the way, I needed to drill to take the 8BA bolt. And before I get lots of comments, yes, I know this is a brass bolt and it's no good for the job, but it will do for starters. I'm going to make a stainless steel bolt with a plain shank and drill out the first part of the thread. So the front part of this arm will be clear in size for 8BA and the threaded part with a lock nut will be behind it. With a temporary bolt in the other end, I'm just making sure that nothing fouls and the slot is deep enough, and indeed it is. So I think this is really starting to look okay. I don't want it to be too pristine because the rest of the engine isn't. 
although I probably will clean it up some more before final assembly. This stuff is Loctite 243 and it's not a retainer and it's not a hydraulic seal, it's a thread locker. This is only a temporary solution to stop the bolt that I'm going to screw into this hole from falling out. In the same way as the 8BA bolt at the other end, I will make a bolt for this end too with a plain shank. Although I see it very frequently in model steam engines, it's not a good idea to use a threaded bolt as a bearing surface on a part like this. What I'm doing in this clip is rotating the flywheel just to make sure that for every revolution of the crankshaft, the physical travel of the actuating arm on the lubricator is sufficient to let the pawl just slip over one tooth on the ratchet. And I'm pleased to say that this is the case. If it had not been so, I would have had to drill out the upper hole in the arm and refit the link. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.